I'm Dr. Jeffrey Sterling, Surgeon General for Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. This vlog is on healthcare disparities in stroke. There are differences in the distribution of the burden of risk factors, stroke incidence and prevalence, and stroke mortality, meaning the death rate, amongst different racial and ethnic groups. In addition, there are disparities in stroke care between minority groups when compared with whites. We'll discuss all of this in this vlog. Racial and ethnic minority groups experience higher rates of stroke overall. Risk factors include hypertension, which is the single most important modifiable risk factor, diabetes, heart disease, including atrial fibrillation, and lifestyle factors such as an unhealthy diet, a lack of physical activity, resulting in obesity, tobacco and alcohol use, the presence of high cholesterol, and others. All of these things contribute to increased rates of stroke, incidence, and mortality. As mentioned, hypertension is the largest of the modifiable risk factors. It's no surprise that African-Americans have higher rates of stroke when 42% of African-Americans have high blood pressure. This is a dramatically increased rate when compared to all other groups. And the Hispanic population is also less likely monitor to monitor and to know their blood pressure level. Diabetes as a stroke risk factor also shows an increased relevance, uh, prevalence amongst African-Americans, Hispanics, and Native American groups. There's a disproportionate impact on younger age groups when it comes to stroke. This is usually the case when there's an increase in hypertension, obesity, lipid disorders, diabetes, and tobacco use. And stroke risk factors and disparities exist in the presentation of risk factors. Women who have strokes actually have a higher prevalence of hypertension, atrial fibrillation, and pre-stroke disability. Stroke has a greater impact on racial and ethnic groups. In fact, the risk of having a first stroke is nearly twice as high for African-Americans than in other populations. Similarly, those who have less high school education tend to have an increased stroke incidence. They are three times more likely to have a stroke than individuals who have obtained a college education. As was the case previously, there's a significant increase in high blood pressure, obesity, and diabetes, lipid disorders, and tobacco use. Disproportionately, strokes occur in younger age groups. Nearly one third of strokes occur amongst adults aged 35 to 64 years. In African-Americans, stroke is the third leading cause of death. And this is the highest stroke death rate when compared with other racial and ethnic groups. In fact, blacks have a stroke mortality rate, death rate, 40% higher than, right, than whites. Between the ages of 35 and 64, blacks with strokes have a three to four times the risk of dying from stroke than whites of the same age. Partially because there's an increased prevalence of high blood pressure, diabetes, and lower socioeconomic status. In Hispanics, stroke is the fourth leading cause of death. And that stroke death rate trend has been reversed. Between years 2000 and 2013, there was a decline in the stroke rate, which has now increased between 2013 and 2015. Amongst women, strokes are the third leading cause of death. Strokes actually kill twice as many women as does breast cancer. In Hispanics, stroke is the fourth leading cause of death and 20% of Hispanic women will have a stroke in her lifetime, in their lifetimes. Hispanic women show 55,000 more strokes than do Hispanic men. And African-American women are nearly twice as likely as African-American men to have a stroke as are white women. As is often the case, access to care, quality to care, and cost of care represent barriers to equal care. 
geographic barriers may include things such as proximity to and availability of health providers. Minority populations simply are more likely to live in health deserts. Transportation itself can be a geographical barrier if the family can't afford a car, for example, that makes it more difficult to get to a primary care appointment or to an emergency department visit. There may be lesser insurance company. You have to understand that insurance is largely delivered through jobs and with higher unemployment rates, minorities tend to have less insurance than does the general population. And otherwise having lesser financial resources also represents a barrier. African-Americans have a greater stroke of stroke severity, higher rates of post-stroke disability, a greater likelihood of first and second strokes and poor rates of follow-up. Similarly, women have poor functional outcomes, more depression, a lower quality of life, and a greater likelihood of post-stroke institutionalization. These things result in a greater likelihood of depression, poor quality of life, and increased risk of hospitalization and post-hospitalization institutionalization. And this is the nature of healthcare disparities. African-Americans have almost double the rate of hospitalizations as does whites. And the impact on younger Blacks between the ages of 34 um, and 65 shows that just about a third um, of those who get stroke are in that lower age group amongst African-Americans. The annual economic burden for Blacks in terms of cost of healthcare is about $34 billion. Caregiving costs represent another $40 billion. And the financial burden of these racial disparities comes to about $24 billion a year. Well, if you're going to make an effort to address disparities in stroke incidents and stroke care, you need to understand that it must be a national state and local priority because it's not just the disease, but the factors that are in our communities that allow these diseases like strokes to occur more frequently. We must develop, implement, and evaluate interventions that prevent cardiovascular diseases and their risk factors. We have to decrease disparities in stroke care on families, individuals, and communities. We have to increase capacity of communities to implement policies for changes that involves eliminating health deserts having more physicians and other healthcare providers and improving access to care. And we have to increase adoption and dissemination of evidence-based interventions amongst racial and ethnic minority populations. That's the self-empowerment that we as individuals much have to know what to look for, when to be seen, and how to prevent these things from happening to begin with. Social determinants of health are so important you can see from this pie chart that socioeconomic factors represent 40% of the impact of health when it comes to stroke victims. Health behavior is a 30%. Access to healthcare and delivery of healthcare services represent another 20%. And the physical environment in which we live is estimated to contribute about 10% of the impact on patient health. As mentioned, the social determinants of health are critical here. Society needs to create a shared vision and value of health equity. There must be an increase in community capacity to care for people and to shape healthcare outcomes. There must be collaboration across many sectors of the community to improve outcomes. Because after all, patients are somewhat unaware and maybe even oblivious to social determinants of health. They don't realize that their environment can be contributing, that their diet may be promoting disease. We have to help them. They often say nothing, or they may express the symptoms of social determinants of health that lead to disease. Disparities too often reflect societal change as much, if not more, than the dynamics of a given disease. Our solutions must include societal commitments to eradicate healthcare disparities and inequities. Alpha Phi Alpha will continue to advocate for these changes, look for policies that go to that exact consideration. 
Look for additional content on Sphinx TV to assist in your health journey. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Sterling, Surgeon General for Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Thank you for watching.